חזק וברוך, חזק וברוך. First of all, רבותיי, ערב טוב מבורך. בעזרת השם, בעזרת... This דברי תורה will be for the הצלחה, for the success of the entire קהל. אז מי בעזרת השם, in the merit of this דברי תורה, מי הקדוש ברוך הוא? מי הקדוש ברוך הוא? Give everyone big ברכה, הצלחה. All the single people here, בעזרת השם, will find them מזל this year. But not just some zivug, there is zivug from the root of the neshama. All those who have chas v'shom any health problem will find the refuah. And may HaKadosh Baruch Hu simply fulfill all our heart's wishes. Amen. Amen. Now, Botai, Be'ezrat Hashem, we are coming very close to Rosh Hashanah. We are coming very close to the Chagim. Now, we know, Botai, that these Chagim that are coming up are not regular Chagim. It's not like Pesach or even Sukkot or Shavuot. that we all gather, we eat, we drink, we have simcha, then we go home. This Chagim are actually the tests for the entire year. That in this Chagim that are coming up in front of us, they will decide how our entire year will come. When we arrive to Rosh Hashanah, on that one day, the year, if it's going to be a year of blessing, if it's going to be a year of panasa, if it's going to be a year where you will get married, If it's going to be a happy year or if it's going to be a sad year, all that is judged in the holidays that are coming up now. And right now we are in the seven weeks of preparation for those holidays. So we have seven weeks to get up, to work hard, and to buy our next year full of Berach. That it all depends on how we work now. If we put the effort in and we do Teshuvah, And we show HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we're willing to change and we want to change and we want better for ourselves this year, we could achieve that now. Not when the Chag comes, but in these weeks that we have in front of us. So before we start the shiur, I would like to say beautiful chidush. Last year I had in Mamash, it is one of the most beautiful chidushim that, that in preparation for the Chag, in preparation for getting up and doing teshuvah and re, doing repents, repent, repenting, repentance. Repentance. doing teshuvah. We'll see Rabotai Be'ezrat Hashem throughout the Selichot and throughout all the prayers we're going to be doing in the next month or two. There is a sentence that this sentence always I had many questions about. And that sentence is Chadesh Yemenu Kimei Kedem. What does that mean in translation? Chadesh Yemenu Kimei Kedem. That we ask from HaKadosh Baruch Hu HaKadosh Baruch Hu Renew Chadesh Yamenu, renew the days of the past. That all what happened in the past, bring them back. But it explains it in a very unique way. It doesn't just say renew or bring back. It uses the word Kedem, not even past. It's like a history, bring back the history. And it's a way that it's hard to explain in English why it doesn't make sense. But in Hebrew, there is something that doesn't click. So if something doesn't click, that means that there's something to be unveiled, something to be revealed. And that Rabotai is something beautiful. If we look at the word Kedem Rabotai, we can find something, a big Chidush. How do we spell Kedem? Kuf, Dalet, Kuf, Dalet Mem Sofit. Kedem. In these months Rabotai, when we ask for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to forgive us, when we ask for Teshuvah, We shouldn't, we shouldn't just ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, forgive me for my sins. But you should do something bigger. What is that? We take the three biggest people that did the worst sins and HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgave them. And we say HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you forgave those people, how can't you forgive me? Kuf. What? big person, what big character did we see? One of the first sins that were done in the world. Cain. Cain. Cain, what did he do? He killed his brother Evan. It was the first death that existed in the world. But still, HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgave him. David HaMelech. Dalit. Where it said that David HaMelech... Now this Abota is already an entire argument. Did he sin? Did he not sin? But there's the big Maran, Masech Baba Metzia, and the Tzadik, that there it explains the entire thing. Some say he sinned, some say he didn't, but we're not going to get into that. David HaMelech, with at least the, simpli- the, the simple words of the tale that we know, David HaMelech sinned with a married woman of Bathsheba. 
Menashe, the king Menashe. That it said about the king Menashe that he was a king in Am Israel, but he took a sword and he put it in the doorstep of every home of Bnei Israel. And he made a warning, a threat, that anyone that will keep Torah and mitzvot, with that sword that is put on his doorstep, he will kill his, his entire family. Three people, Rabotai, that did sins that were unheard of, unthought of. But still, Akadosh Baruch Hu forgave them. And if Akadosh Baruch Hu forgave those three big people, you have to look up to Akadosh Baruch Hu and say, How can't you forgive me for my small sins that I did? That sometimes I fall here, sometimes I, I fall there. Uh, uh, we're human. There's no such thing as a person that sin that, that lives in this world, even Sadiqim, and don't do bad. Not a is a thought that we need to have. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu Be'ezrat Hashem give us the koach to really in this time do a complete teshuvah, to do a full teshuvah. And with this complete teshuvah, we will reach a year full of beracha, full of atzlacha, in b'siyat ha'deshma'ah g'dola, in everything we do, amen, ken You know, Abotai, every day, every week, mechila, we take another subject, as usual, and we break it down according to the Kabbalah on its secrets behind it. But actually, this shiur is simple. What it is, is it, it takes the things that are not necessarily secret, but hidden, and we reveal. Sometimes the hidden things could be the big things that we come up and we speak about the Zohar, we speak about Kabbalah, that everyone says, this is shocking. And sometimes it's the things that we do every single day, and we don't know the answer to them things that we do and we don't ask, things that we do and we don't realize. And it takes a little bit of revealing from the secrets of the Zohar Kadosh in order to understand our entire world. Last week, Abotai, where did we get to? What was last week's Shur Abotai? We're in the morning. We didn't even get to Shacharit. It's already months of doing the Shur. No, we didn't even get to Shacharit. We got Abotai to the thought that the one needs to have when he does what? When he eats. That at the time when a person eats, He's able to achieve something big. So now we're going to go one step further. And that abotai is a mitzvah, the tefillah of Asher Yatsa. But we know abotai that is written in many books of the Mukbalim that the tefillah of Asher Yatsa is one of the most important prayers that exist in a man's life. That in a man's life, Asher Yatsa is one of the biggest. Why is that? First of all, what is Asher Yatzar? Many people now maybe could be asking, what is Asher Yatzar? Asher Yatzar is a tefillah, it's a short prayer, that we pray either after we use the restroom, or even some opinions say, even when you wake up in the morning, you went or you didn't go, you have to do Asher Yatzar. That it doesn't matter what you did that day, in the morning when you wake up, you must do Asher Yatzar. And there are many secrets, and we're going to try but I just to explain the importance of Asher Yatzar and what one could achieve with the simple tefillah of Asher Yatzar. You know, Abotai, we all woke up, Baruch Hashem, this morning, <coughs> got up, did our tefillah, maybe went to work, maybe went to learn, but we all, Baruch Hashem, woke up. Sometimes, some days we could have easy days, some days we could have simple days. Some days pass fast. Some days pass a little bit hard. But we all get through our days. And by... I have a the flash. You're blinding me. Chshuma, we say in Arabic. But Chshuma means it's... So we all have to go through our day. And there's something big that we don't even realize. Something that we can pass an entire lifetime, and maybe very few times we think about that. And that is Abotai, the miracles that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us and does to us on a daily basis that we don't even realize. You know, Abotai, if we look at our body, you'll see that our body is built out of what? It's built a botai of billions of little particles, of millions of cells, of so many things 
that exist at once, that somehow all work together in a harmony. And we take that for granted. That every single day of our lives, Abu Tayyip, Akadosh Baruch Hu, makes every single small part of our body work in the exact way where it needs to work in order to keep our body alive. That the body is one of the most complicated things in the world. It said Abu Tayyip that what, if not mistaken, someone said, if you take every single uh, atom in the body and you align them in a line, you can do the entire world in a circle, in one circle. That the body of Abu is one of the most complicated things that exists in the world. That if you can imagine and think of something complicated, the body is ten times more complicated. Where every single thing has a job. Where every single thing has a sp specific place where it needs to get to. Where the blood needs to send the, it, 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 it go from one place of the body to the next. Where the body needs to absorb some foods and take out others. That every single body part, if you look at your eyeball, if you look at your ear, if you look at what makes up your stomach, what allows you to eat, you get into different worlds. That if one of the things, one of the small pieces, if our cells stop working, which is our tiny little, little thing, what happens to our body? It all collapses. That every single thing is leaning on millions of other little particles to do its job correctly in order for a person to stay alive. Abu Tai, that's not a miracle. It's not a miracle that every single day of Abutai, Akadosh Baruch Hu makes it that millions of things happen at once and we take it for granted. You know, Abutai, if you take one thing, one little pipe, one little vein, and you close it, what happens to that one little thing that you close? Chas a person, it could break apart. It could be Chas V'Shalom, or even worse, if Chas V'Shalom, a person's a, a system, it's locked. The suffering that he can go through is something immense. Sometimes Abu we can take for granted the fact that everything is working the way it should be. You know, Abu I heard a story that someone said that there was a man at one time, one of his uh, things in his stomach got closed. And because it got closed, he couldn't properly clean himself. And it took him many days of suffering where at a certain point he couldn't handle it anymore. They run to the hospital, and they said, no, we have to clean him out, but we have to do surgery. So the doctor said, you know, I'm going to put you a, a sedative to make it go to sleep, and after I make it go to sleep, I'm going to cut open. The man from such pain of one thing that gets closed, he said, don't even put it to sleep, just cut, just release. That we rely on millions of things to work exactly properly, in order for us to survive regularly. How many times about I, in a day in our life do we sit down and we think HaKadosh Baruch Hu for making sure that everything in our body is walking, working in the proper way? But sometimes about I, we pass years without even realizing. When do we start to realize that Baruch Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed us so much that we're able to, to, to work properly when something starts to hurt? That suddenly, when you have, you see someone that is sick, maybe has fever, maybe his teeth start to hurt, and he's suffering and it's bothering him, one thing that doesn't work, and he sits there and he starts to imagine to himself, wow, imagine what, how, much, how much more productive I could have been when it wasn't in pain. Imagine how good my situation could be if my teeth don't hurt right now. Or imagine if I wasn't sick, how much I can do good. Abutai. We only feel and we are only thankful to HaKadosh Baruch when everything works. When? When it doesn't work. But the real question is Abutai. When HaKadosh Baruch gives all of us health, that we can all come here standing, breathing, no pain, nothing bothering us, do we think HaKadosh Baruch then? Does every day that a person wakes up and he wakes up healthy, does he look up, does he look up to HaKadosh Baruch and say, HaKadosh Baruch thank you for keeping me healthy? So for the most people, I know there are some people that they admit they have that midah, they have that attribute of always thanking Kadosh Baruch for health. Or maybe they went through something in the past. But for the most of us, it's known that even though Kadosh Baruch is giving us so many miracles every single day, it's hard to appreciate. We get used to it. And once you get used to it, you no longer have the same value for it. 
So now I ask you a question of the day. If every single day Kadosh Baruch Hu makes a miracle by keeping us healthy and He gives us that gift and we ignore it, should He still give it to us? The fact that we don't have any gratitude or even show HaKadosh Baruch Hu a small sign that you are recognizing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that gave you health. It's like I give you an example of Abotei. Rabbi Marko, every day he comes and he gives me a gift. That he goes out of his way every single day to go and to bring me something that is a, a gift to me. And every single day I receive it and I give him no recognition for it. I don't even look at him. I don't even say thank you. How long will it take until Rabbi Marko will stop giving? At a certain point when you give and 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 you receive no recognition for it, you're going to start to stop giving. So some will say, no, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bigger than us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu shouldn't be like human that if he doesn't receive recognition, he's going to stop. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have the same feelings that we have. Abote, who said so? We know about that all the feelings that we have, anger, happiness, gratitude, giving, receiving, all those things that we call feelings, we call thoughts, they're based off what? They're based off Akadosh Baruch Hu's thoughts and Akadosh Baruch Hu's feelings. Because the fact that we read that there's times when Akadosh Baruch Hu is upset or when there's times when Akadosh Baruch Hu is happy, it means that it existed before we were around here. So it's not that Akadosh Baruch Hu created it for us, but instead, he copied what already existed and gave it to us. So the same way that if a person would give something good and not receive any recognition, he will stop giving in that same very way. If a person stops thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the health that he has, the fact that nothing's in pain, eventually, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to have to wake him up. And when he wakes a person up, sometimes it could be a very painful thing. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want HaKadosh Baruch Hu to have to wake us up. We want HaKadosh Baruch Hu to continue giving us that miracle every single day. But how can we achieve that? So the only way we could achieve that, Abotai, is every single day saying, Asher Yatsar. That when we say Asher Yatsar, we are essentially giving Akadosh Baruch Hu the recognition he deserves for keeping us healthy and keeping us able to manage in a normal fashion. But the fact that we are able to eat and swallow and drink and swallow and the water goes to where the water is supposed to go and the blood goes to where the blood is supposed to go and not opposite. That Rabotai is a tefillah that we do. That we're giving HaKadosh Baruch a little bit of recognition. We know Rabotai what Rizal says. That the tefillah of Asher Yatsar is one of the most powerful tefillot that exists in a man's entire life. That it says that many tefillot that we pray the height of where the prayer gets to depends on where we are in that moment, on our situation of our religion, on if we did it properly, like we mentioned about in the past, we don't have to repeat it, on how our tefillah was done. But the prayer of Asher Yatsar is one of the very few prayers that goes straight to the highest place in Shammai. Which, where is that? Kisa Kavot. The prayer of Asher Yatsar reaches the throne of Hashem. Where do we learn that? You don't have to go to Kabbalah, you don't have to go to Zohar, you can go to the text itself. Where it says, Galoi, whoever remembers it by heart, Galoi ve'yadua, lifnei kisei kevodecha. That this is a prayer that is obvious, that is, that is in front of the chair of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That when a person does a shariatza, he should know that no matter what he's doing, no matter how he's doing it, it's getting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a time where you can send a letter that you know for a fact it's going to reach its destination. It's a, it's a prayer that you can do, that you know that it's going up straight to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There's no greater way to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu in that way. There's no greater way of thanking Hashem for the miracles that He does for us every day than sending Him that letter direct to the, His throne. We know about time, what the Zohar HaKadosh says, that if a person is strict on Asher Yatsar, his entire life, the Zohar Kodesh says, he will never feel the feeling of suffering of health. That is, a person always does Asher Yatsar anytime, every time he goes to the restroom, he will never know what it is to be unhealthy. 
Where can we learn that? How many words are in Asher Yatzav? 45. You can count. 45 words are in the entire Bracha of Asher Yatzav. How many, what is the gematria of the, the Adam, man? 45. That when a person does Asher Yatzav, he gives Akadosh Baruch Hu the gratitude he deserves. By giving Akadosh Baruch Hu the gratitude he deserves and showing Akadosh Baruch Hu that we see where the miracle is coming from, Akadosh Baruch Hu can bring a man to a position where he will heal and bless his entire body. That the entire Adam will always stay healthy. And that Abotai is something that is very important that we should all know. And that is the concept of Abotai of recognizing the miracle of giving a Kadosh Baruch Hu the gratitude he deserves. When we do so, Rabotai, we can continue to receive that miracle. And you know, Rabotai, this is not just with a Sharia Tzar, and it's not just with the health. Yes, if one does a Sharia Tzar, he can reach to health, but if one f- feels that he needs an extra Bracha before Shalimah, it's a Sharia Tzar, Nachon. But this concept of always <coughs> being able to receive more from a Kadosh Baruch Hu, just by showing a Kadosh Baruch Hu the gratitude that he deserves by him giving it to us, could be found everywhere in our lives. We know about my grandfather, Rabbi Moshe Pinto, and it's something that I mentioned in the past. There was something that he always stood by and always taught and always preached. And that was the concept that he would say that the person should look for the miracle in every single thing in his life. Well, it said about Rabbi Moshe that he would get up from the bed and say, look at that. Akadosh Baruch did me a big miracle just now. What? I got up. You would go to open up the door and the door wasn't locked. Look at that. Akadosh Baruch did me a big miracle just now. That I, I, the door could have been locked, but now it, but it wasn't. And, Akadu, and Moshe Rabbeinu, and Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, yes. Uh, uh, Rabbi Moshe would always, always be so strict to find where Akadosh Baruch Hu did a miracle in every single small thing in his life. And he brought the Kadosh Baruch Hu into every single small thing that he did in his world. Why was that? Because he said something amazing. He said, no, Kadosh Baruch Hu, he wants to bless us. Kadosh Baruch Hu wants to keep that pipeline of Bracha open between him and his son. But the thing is that there is a strength, a power that works over time to make sure that we don't receive all the blessings that we should receive. And who is that? Who are we talking about? Sitracha, the bad forces. That when a Kadosh Baruch Hu wants to send down big blessing to a man, what does the bad forces do? He says, look at this man, he's going to receive big blessing now. As long as he keeps receiving blessing, he's out of my control. As long as he keeps his connection close to a Kadosh Baruch Hu, out of my control, look at the gifts that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is sending him. So the Yitzhara will go out of his way and do everything in his power to make that man maybe sin or to make that man unworthy of receiving or stopping that blessing period from reaching to the man. So Abhi Moshe would always say, what does HaKadosh Baruch do? He takes big blessings and he takes big miracles and he puts them a costume on. That he dresses them in an appearance of an everyday situation. That actually the big blessing, the big miracle is hidden in the fact that you got to where you got to and it was everything worked out. Something simple. And that Abotai is the miracle of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Rabbi Moshe would say, if I, I'm, if I will always thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu and recognize all the miracles that He gave to me hidden or not hidden in my life, I will always be able to receive more. Because I keep the pipeline open. I show Akadush Baruch Hu gratitude for the good that he gives me. And that Abutai is one thing, but another thing that is very important, and this is why I want to continue on, is the concept of bringing Akadush Baruch Hu into everything we do. You know Abutai, when one does like what we, what we just said, which was something that my grandfather would, like said, would always stand on, where he looks for the presence of Akadush Baruch Hu, everywhere in the world, he actually brings HaKadosh Baruch Hu there. Where HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as just explained, wants to be everywhere. He wants to be a part of every single step of your life. But the problem is, is that a lot of times we take him out. 
that the Kadosh Baruch Hu could be in every small thing. I open the drawer, I close the drawer. But we pull a Kadosh Baruch Hu out of our day-to-day lives. That we don't necessarily give a Kadosh Baruch Hu, we don't bring him into everything that we do. And if a person Abotai will be able to bring a Kadosh Baruch Hu into every single small thing that he does by just looking for where a Kadosh Baruch Hu could have did a miracle, and where Kadosh Baruch could have been present, essentially Abotai, there is no place where Hashem is not there. Kadosh Baruch now is suddenly everywhere. In that Abotai is something that is very big. Because if a person can reach to the level where Kadosh Baruch is everywhere, there's no such thing Abotai as a, it's a few things that we could touch here. There's no such thing that bad could happen to him. Because we know Abotai with Azor Kadosh says that anywhere where Kadosh Baruch dwells, what can't dwell in the same place? It's Ara, Sidra Ha'a. The bad forces that Akadosh Baruch is like fire. And the fire burns all the little bugs that are around. That if you put everything that you do in your life, every step of what you do in your work, in your food, in your, in your, in your driving, in your walking, in your praying, everything that you do, essentially you put that fire, that presence of Akadosh Baruch Hu everywhere. And where everywhere where Akadosh Baruch Hu is present, no bad can dwell there. And that Abotai is the biggest thing that a person can do. That when a person can reach a, a level like that Abotai, he will find that he will not be able to have fear in what he does. Because now suddenly Akadosh Baruch Hu is present with him. That in his good, in his bad, Akadosh Baruch Hu is fighting with him, is standing with him. Like what's said in Tehilim, what the Zohar actually brings this Tehilim to be, this Perk of Tehilim, as a big segula for Akadosh Baruch Hu to bless a person always with Panasa and to always protect him from, from bad that could exist. Which is a Tehilim in Perek Kaf Gimel. Where there it says, Lo ira'ara ki atayim adi. That when you bring a Kadosh Baruch Hu into your life, into everything that we can squeeze in there, no bad could dwell. Because the presence of Hashem burns all the bugs, burns all the bad that could surround it. That suddenly a person, no matter what his situation will be, he will always be able to get up and to fight. And in the end, it will be good. Because even though it could seem a little bit hard, or even if a person is going through his hard times in his life, he'll know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is standing with him. Because he brought HaKadosh Baruch Hu to him. And that Abotai is how a person could go through his life with big atzlacha. Easy time, in the hard time, it doesn't matter. We know that in the end, it will be good. That as long as we bring Hashem into all our deeds, in the end result will always be full of blessing. Where it's like a botai, a man that goes to a place, a gym, to go to a gym. When you, in the beginning, when he goes to a gym, what happens to him? It hurts. He goes through his hard times. But he continues to fight on. Why? Because he knows that the end will be good. He knows that the result will always be positive. So no matter how hard the process is, there's no fear. Because a man walks with Akadosh Baruch Hu. And that Abotai is one of the biggest things that a person could do. Is have Akadosh Baruch Hu present in every small thing in our life. When we bring Akadosh Baruch Hu as a present in the smallest things, we bring bracha to the smallest things. And not only a bra- bracha, but it could also teach us about something big. You know about a big problem today, when you come to, to people that have hard situations, and you speak to them about the hard situations, you'll see that they don't even necessarily have fear on the situation itself. They're not necessarily fearing that pinch that they received. But they're fearing the fear of the pinch. That you have sometimes people that a bad thing happens to them. Instead of getting up and solving it, they don't have the tools to do it. Because they're so busy on not being able to deal with it. So they get up and they start to add fear on the fear. But now they don't, have, not, not, they don't only have to solve their issue, 
But now they have to solve the fear that they created themselves. So it's like now on Thursday, we're going to receive a lot of people. I'm going to be stressed that we're not going to have enough time. Instead of saying, let's start to go through them, what am I going to do? I'm going to be more stressed on the fact that we have stress. That comes from a lack of what? It comes from a lack of imna. That we start, in most, I will say this is most of our problems. If we take most of our problems and we take the problem to its simplicity and we try to understand the problem, we'll see that the problems are not big. That the problems are very simple. And that we add on top of it fear, we add on top of it stress, we add on top of it pressure. That if we were able to just see our problem and say the end result will be good, and the Kadosh Baruch Hu is with me on this, you'll never get to that situation. He'll get up and start. He'll get up and start to solve the problem. That the person of Botai can get to a point that he even gets, finds a love, finds a strength through fighting through the hard times. Because even the hard times that you fight, you know that you're not alone. You know that the Kadosh Baruch is with you. And the concept of fear is just a lack of imunah, a lack of presence of a Kadosh Baruch. You know, there's a story with a Rambam. As we know, Rambam, what was he in profession? Doctor. He was a doctor. Now it said that he was a doctor of who? He was a doctor of the king of Egypt. Now the doctor, the king of Egypt, he had two doctors. This, Rabotai, this is a lesson for us to learn to truly what is the concept of fear of the problem and not even the problem itself. The king had two doctors. He had a Rambam, a Jewish Tamid Chacham, and then he had Ishmaeli. What is Ishmaeli? Uh, an Arab, a local. But both of them served as two doctors of the king. The Ishmaeli started to grow a hate for Rambam. Because Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, he was smart, he was charismatic, he did miracles, he had Ruach HaKodesh, he was a prophet. So the other doctor said, what can I do to get rid of a Rambam? So he went to the king and he told the king, you know my king, we are of one religion and you have a doctor that takes care of you, which is Jewish. So let's get rid of this doctor and I am your doctor and I'll stay your doctor. So the king looked at this doctor and he said, listen, the bottom line, it's about who is better at healing. This is not uh, entertainment that, that, uh, that I like, you, I like your, your, your company more than his company. It's bottom line. You know how to heal better, he knows how to heal better. So the king said, I have an idea. Let's do a competition. What is this competition? He said, I want both of you to take a time where you will give poison to Arambam. You can make any potent poison you can think of. You can work on it for however long you need. Arambam will have to eat it and he will have to cure himself. <coughs> if Arambam will cure himself, it will be flipped. Where he will uh, take the poison that you make for him and he will have, you will have to cure yourself. The one that survives is the better doctor. The better doctor will be the one that serves me. So the other doctor, the Arab doctor, he said, you know what? Perfect. I want Arambam to go first. Send Arambam, I want to prepare my poison first. After I prepare my poison, if he survives, he'll challenge me. Arambam agreed. He was Jewish. He, didn't, uh, he had imuna. He had no fear of, the, of anything. So Arambam right away ran to his house and he called the students and he prepared something, some sort of uh, treatment, some sort of food. And he told the students that Be'ezrat Hashem, in a couple of days, we're going to have a challenge that's going to be a public challenge. That at the moment that the other doctor is going to give me poison to eat, I want you, I'm going to lay down on the ground, you're going to take a bed, you're going to put me on top of the bed, and you're going to carry me to the house fast. And you give me this food and you do exactly what I tell you to do. And you don't miss one detail. For meanwhile, the Rambam went back to the king, told the king, I am ready whenever the doctor is ready. So the other doctor went and started to cook up shchor. You know, shchor is lice there. So to put all the bad things they could find. Put snake poison, he put this, he put that, he put sand. 
anything possible that he knows for a fact that will kill Arambam. And he prepared this big zdav uh, poison. Uh, concoction. Con- concoction of a, how do you call it, a, a cocktail of a poison. And he gave it to Arambam. Everyone was standing around and said, take it. Arambam took the cup with no fear. He had a muna. Drink the cup. No problem, no bracha, no bracha. We don't do bracha on, uh, on, on, on poison. It's like a lot of people ask, what's the bracha on cigarettes? <laughs> There's no bracha done on, on cigarettes. Arabam took the poison, and he laid down on the ground. His students took him, took him to the house, and he did the treatment. The other doctor said there is no way where he will survive this makkah that I gave him. I put everything. I put cigarettes in it. I put everything. <laughs> There's no way he will survive a day and a half later, who does that other doctor see walking in the streets? Rambam. So he said, how is it possible? I put him uh, everything. So now he said, you know what? Hashem irachem on me. I know that Rambam is smart. Now it's my turn to take the poison. <laughs> Rambam went. He took a couple of fruits. Rambam ties into this. He took a couple of fruits. Cut up a couple of fruits. Put it in a bowl. And in front of the king, gave it to the other doctor. And the other doctor was holding the bowl. He said, look, mine was black and mine was moving. And his is fruits. So if he put fruits, Hashem irachim what's inside his fruits. So the doctor was eating it. And every bite he's eating from the fruits, he's not tasting the taste of the fruits, but shaking from what type of poison the Rambam. I've never heard of a poison that's fruits. He took the poison and he's waiting. And he sees nothing's happening. He said, I know what the Rambam did. The Rambam put a poison that only starts to work if I eat meat. After I eat meat, that's when the poison, that's the mixture of both of those two things, I'm going to die. So I'm not going to eat meat. <laughs> Ten minutes later, he said, but you know, maybe it could be that he did that with milk. But the moment I drink milk, at that second, I will die. So I'm not going to drink milk. But then he was thinking, he said, maybe it could be also water. But when I drink water, the moment I drink the water, I could die from that. Then he said, maybe it could be another fruit, or maybe it could be this, maybe it could be that. And like that, two, three days, he was sitting in his mind until he died. <laughs> from what about time? From fear, not of the problem, but fear of the fear of the problem. That he stacked upon himself not only dealing with the issue, but dealing with the fear that comes with the issue. And that about is something big. And this big problem that we see could be solved with one thing, of making HaKadosh Baruch Hu present in our lives. If we bring HaKadosh Baruch Hu into our lives, that every step of the way, He's with us, He's standing with us, He's protecting us, no matter where we are in life, we will always end up the ones with the right hand up, the ones that are cheering for the victory. And that Abotai is the mission of this week. Abizat Hashem, finding anywhere that we can find the presence of Akadosh Baruch Hu, any place we can put Akadosh Baruch Hu, we put in there. And when we do that Abotai, there will be nothing that will can stop us, we will be unstoppable. Because if Akadosh Baruch Hu is standing by our side, it is the best team. So that Abotai is Abizat Hashem, is a blessing for this upcoming week. This Amen. upcoming week Abotai is what week? Tiferet. It's like today, it's Yom Shelishi, it's Tuesday. But Tiferet is, is the Sefira, it's the attribute of what? Of Torah. Of Torah, of Emunah, of Akadosh Baruch Hu. No, it's, now it's when Tiferet, now, now when Vua, but the upcoming week I said. Ah, sorry. It's, it's Emunah. We bring the Emunah of Akadosh Baruch Hu in every place in our lives, and we make it present, and we will have. Big at Sakha, Amen. 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 Is there any questions? Chabot. Ken, Chabot, Zadik. How do you define Emuna? Emuna, the two, you know, a lot of people, you know what, I give an example. There are two different ways to look at Emuna. Chabot, I have a question. I want everyone to answer. Do everyone believe this table is here? Everyone believes. So everyone be- now a different question. Does everyone believe in Akadosh Baruch Hu? Yes. So everyone believes. Okay, I don't believe. 
I don't have emuna. The same way I don't have emuna, this table is here. So the same way I don't have, I don't believe the table is here. I don't believe Akadosh Baruch exists. I know. I see the table. I know the table is here. I don't have doubts that the table is here. And that about is the difference between how that's how I see Imuna. Imuna is seeing the presence of a Kadosh Baruch. Yes, it takes steps. It's not something that is automatic. It's a muscle that we have to build, a muscle we have to strengthen. Where it starts by the smallest thing. That if a person can take, start from the bottom, start from the smallest thing, like the Shabbat. The Shabbat, I, w- I went to a group of people, and what did I tell them? A group of people. I told them, Be'ezrat Hashem, from this upcoming week, we're all going to stop putting tefillin, and stop keeping Shabbat, and stop keeping Kippshut. So everyone looked at me, they said, wow, this Rav is very good. He's, uh, he's very, he makes it easy on us. And the content of today is simple. It's, all those things come as a result of having love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But if you can find in your heart love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you can strengthen that muscle of love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you can reach everything. You can reach to an imuna where you see and don't believe, where you know and don't believe. And you can reach to a point where you keep all the Torah and mitzvot. Because like we said, Shabbat, Tefillin, Kashrut, need to be a result of love for Hashem, a result of imuna, and not vice versa. You know what about I, now that I mentioned, I'm going to, to tell everyone what I've been starting to push with a lot of the young this week. Something I've been pushing a lot with the young. I think it's, it's, it's something that is very important. That instead of focusing on the result, we go to the root. And the root is occupying a place in our heart where our Kadosh Baruch could dwell. Occupying a place in our heart where we devote that little corner for Hashem. Because the problem is about I, a lot of people keep a big distance with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they don't necessarily find a place where they have love where they have a personal connection you know Botei we all hear how many hours in a day we use our phones how many hours I take notes though from you Botei so, a lot of hours Botei why don't we take two minutes this is, what I, this is the first step if you take this step you can reach to a complete imuna, you can reach to uh, seeing and not believing, you can reach to all the time it's about, you can believe, you reach to all the blessings in this world and reach to all the blessings in the next world. Two minutes, you take your phone and you put a timer. 120 seconds, that's it, two minutes. And you start that timer and you put the phone in front of you. And take those two minutes to have a conversation, to have a talk, between you and your father that's in Shammai. To take two minutes to just ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu what you need for that day. To take two minutes, with those two minutes you spill your heart to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You tell him all your problems, you tell him all what you're missing, you tell him what you want. Those two minutes about that, where we make that personal connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, can open up a lifetime of blessings. It's going to the root, in tracing from the root to the result. And that about that is something that is very big. So I encourage everyone to start to take it upon themselves. And what is imuna? Imuna is belief, it's recognition, like Kadosh Baruch. Yeah. Um, also you said that one of the people who feel that they can You know, even Moshe Rabbeinu had to die. Yeah. And Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm sure he thanked like Adosh Baruch for what he gave him. There's a big difference of having a time when a person has a mission, he does his mission, he leaves, than to living a life of health and peace. So when you do a Sheri it doesn't mean you're necessarily not going to die. It's that you, the, the days you have written for you, you live it with health. And you see many people that they live the days that they're supposed to, but Allah, Hashem Rachem. So a shayat tzar is not necessarily to live for it. It's not the secret to eternal life. It's uh, the secret to healthy life. Let's say it. More questions? Can I be mayor? Be mayor? Yes. Hashem. Yeah. Uh, when you do a prayer, does the prayer like put your intent on autopilot? Like if you don't have the intent, if you say the prayer... 
I say intent. Intention. Uh, intention, okay. The intention. Like when you say like, thank God I'm healthy and this. Uh, but let's say you say that and you don't realize it's a mechanical. Does it fill in intent? Like is it you have the intent? When you read, so look, so look, there's a big difference. You know, if you read from a text, a lot of people take prayer as Shachrit Michal Arvid. That's not prayer. Prayer is between you and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you spill your heart to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he receives. Of course, when you read, you're going to receive the merit. Of course, like for example, until uh, last week, nobody knew what Amen was. Nobody knew what Amen meant. We asked, what is Amen? Nobody knew what Amen meant. So what, we never answered Amen in our life? No, we answered Amen. It's just a difference of doing the mitzvah or using that mitzvah to receive abundance of blessing. So for example, last week we spoke about food. We said there are three types of eating. You can eat one time, just eat, do bracha, you eat sayeh, baraka, you're eating kosher food, it's fine, you eat. But then there's another way of making your food into your source of blessing, where you take something and with the right intention, with the right kavanah and the right thought, you completely change it. So it's not just doing, it's how you do it. So it's like if I were to give you an example. There's two workers for the king, two servants. One servant does his job fast and sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes he knows what he's doing, sometimes he doesn't know what he's doing. Another one does his job singing, happiness, with the right intentions, good morning, the king. They both did the job, but who's the king going to love and want to give more gifts? The one that's going to be the happy, the one that's going to do it in the right way. So it's not just the job, but the way you do it. We do the prayer, we do the prayer. But there's, it, it, it's been a big segula that Araf Kanievsky pushes a lot. Araf Kanievsky always he tells anyone that needs Rufwa Shilema, him and his wife. Anyone that needs healing, and wants to live a healthy life, he says, read Asher Yatzar from the book. Don't just say it, you read it. If you read it from the book, you'll always live a healthy life. And if you're sick and you start, you always, this is something that he says constantly, you will come to a complete of Shilema. Big Segula, big Segula. Question about time? Ah. <laughs> um, for, for, for Keda, you said for... Kedesh Yemen, you can make Kedem. I don't I can take any story and I can explain it in a positive way. But the bottom line is, the Zohar says that Kyle, in the beginning, he had such hate for his brother, where he wanted to kill him and he didn't know how to. Because nobody killed before. So it said, it didn't exist. So Kyle said, what did he do? He started in the beginning, he, he tried everything. So the Zohar says he was pinching his finger so that it didn't kill him. Then he was hitting his arm and so that it didn't kill him. So he really had the intention to kill him. And he did kill him. So how is that not a sin? It's a human nature to kill? It's also human nature to sin. <coughs> what? He, he, he was the first one. But death was already there. Death was already existing. Huh? You can say to him, where did he? You know, I said Adam Arishon was punished for three sins that he did. Avodah Zarah, idol worship. Yiluah Hayot. Yiluah is uh, not allowed the uh, relations between a man and a woman. And the third one is spilling of blood. So it always existed. And exactly opposite. At that time, Adam was not even able to eat a, a fish. Adam was not even able to kill a fish. Because there was no concept of killing. And Cain was the first one that did murder. He was the first one that murdered. <coughs> Even the, the sacrifice that Hevel brought was fruit. So killing was a sin. He was the first one that made it. That's why his sin was always the first one that did the sin is the worst. So why wasn't the rectification death? Ma? Why wasn't the rectification death? If, 
you look in the Shah Yilbulim, in the gate of in the gate of your carnation, the Farizal, you'll see maybe forty pages just speaking about the Gilgulim of Kain in heaven to repair the sin of Kain. Of, of What's the of your carnation? We shouldn't, we shouldn't just ask. What's reincarnation? You don't know uh, Gilgul. Reincarnation. How do you explain reincarnation? When you come back as a when you come back, uh, when you come back as another person. Ken. Avodah Zarah, Kadosh Baruch came to him and told him, you don't touch the tree, you don't eat from the tree, and you eat from the tree. What, what is the concept of Avodah Zarah? Going against a Kadosh Baruch Hu, but in a way of saying a Kadosh Baruch Hu is not a Kadosh Baruch Hu. If you look at the sin, and now you're pulling me now to deeper Zohar. If you look at the sin of Adam and a lot of people think it's eating for fruit. What is the sin? What is the sin of Adam? Going against Hashem's word, right? By doing what? Eating the apple. Of the, eating the, the apple. Tree. Okay, eating the apple, eating the, uh, the grapes, okay. You, Tzadik. you, Tzadik. You, you, you. What was the sin of Adam Arishon? Eating the apple. When against, no, Rabotai, grapes, some say grapes, some say apples, some say chita, uh, chita, wheat. No, Rabotai. He didn't wait to have relations with his wife? That's another sin, Ken, that's another part of the sin. But what is, what is the actual sin? Eli. Eli, okay. So Zohar Kadush actually gives a completely different example. The Zohar was into something that is scary. It says that the sin of Adam Arishon was not that he ate from the apple. The story of the apple or the grape or the, or the wheat is a made-up story. There is no sin in that. There was no sin in eating. It doesn't make sense. How, why eating from a fruit would cause the destruction of the world? The problem was the intention that Adam had. But what happened? The snake, the Zohar Kedush says, came to Chava. The snake told Chava, look Chava. Go, it, now we're going to get to Mephashim. He pushed her first. He didn't push her first. Let's be simple with the Zohar says. The Zohar says he came to Chava and told Chava, Chava, eat from the tree. So Chava said, no. Hashem told my husband that we're not allowed to. So the snake said, but you don't understand why HaKadosh Pahu told your husband that you're not allowed to. Why? So the snake said, because that tree makes you into a god. That whoever eats from that tree becomes a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Now, a Kadosh Baruch Hu is afraid of his position. That if you are going to eat from the tree, you're going to go to be his level. And if you're at his level, you could fight him, you could kill him. So he told you that you're not allowed to eat from the tree. But eat from the tree, and you'll see what you can do then. That actually, Adam and Chava's intention was not just to go against the will of Hashem, but it was actually to go and to fight with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to kill Chas V'Shalom. These words were even scary to, 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 to think of. Mamash, I'm thinking about it and I'm debating if I should even say it. But in simple, word, simple words, the intention of Adam was to go and kill HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That that was his will. And when he ate from the tree, he didn't have the intention of going against the will. He had the intention where I'm going to fight the God that created me with his own hands. And that's why the sin was so bad. Who asked that? That's why the sin was so bad. And that's why we compare it to Avodah Zarah, Ayloj. Because he saw himself as a potential God, as a potential leader, as one that could fight a Kadosh Baruch himself. It said that Rav Zusha, we know about the two big, the two brothers, Rabbi Noam and Melech and Rav Zusha. Rav Zusha and Rabbi Noam Melech were one of the first uh, uh, founders of Hasidut. The concept of Hasidut, which Hasidut today, it's Breslev, it's Chabad, all the Hasidut, one of the founders was Rav Zusha and his brother Rabbi Noam Melech. It said about Admu Mibelz, that he says a house that does not have the book of Rabbi Noam Melech, he will not enter. That any house that does not have the book of Rabbi Noam Melech, he said, I will never, I, I, he asked, he said he would ask any home that he went to, do you have the book of Abinu Melech? If he has it, he can enter. If he doesn't have it, he can enter. So it said that Abinu Melech, 
מגיעה power of attracting. That he had a כוח of bringing people back with Shuvah. That just by looking at him, you want to do the Shuvah. You look at him and you have a... You get pulled. Why? Because it said that he had a neshama, that its power was to pull to bring back the Shuvah. Rav Zusha came to Rabbi Noah and asked him, and this is what I try to be focused because it's a little bit. Rav Zusha asked Rabbi Noah Minimelech, Rabbi Noah, my brother, I have a question. We know that all our neshamot come from where? Come from the neshama of who? Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon. That we are all another piece of the neshama. There was one neshama, Hashem broke it, we are all a piece of it. So Rav Zusha said, Rabbi Noam, if you and me were in the body of Adam, or especially if you were in the body of Adam, how didn't you stop Adam from sinning with the sin of it's Adat, the tree of knowledge? That you have such a power in your neshama to bring back people to Shuvah, how didn't your piece of the neshama of Adam stop him from sinning? So what did Rabbi Noam Yimlech say? He said, because I had a big dilemma in my head. I was just, why? He said, I thought to myself, I have two options. Either eat from the tree and get punished and know what I did wrong and know that what the snake told me was a lie. Or I will live my entire life thinking, what if I ate from the tree? What if I didn't eat from the tree? I could have been a god, but I didn't. Regret. That, that thought would haunt him the enti- his entire life. Oh. So he said, I'd rather get punished and not have that thought haunt us. Where sometimes in life, I would die, we have these situations <laughs> where, where we eat ourselves, we eat our own neshama. Yeah. What if, and what if, and what if, and this could have, and that could have, and what if I did this, and what if I did that? I could have been here, I could have lost this, I could have gained that. Those thoughts, Abotai, are the worst mm-hmm. thoughts that could exist. Where Adam Arishon, even took the decision to get punished did not go through that. I would tell last questions fast, no more. Uh, so you said actually the answer is one of two prayers that goes all the way to Israel. Can you do for someone else in mind? Yes. No, I know. That's not my question. Um, my question is, because you know that it can get to such a high level, what if you have the intention of asking for other things while you're saying actually Israel? That is the point. That is the way you connect to HaKadosh Baruch That's why Rabbi uh, Yishchai uh, says that when you do, a lot of people, they do a Shariah Tzar, they leave the bathroom, they do it yet yet daim. But I, what do you do? I don't want to make my question, my answers long. Uh, they leave the bathroom, they do it yet yet daim. And right after they do it yet yet daim, they're washing their hands, they're drying their hands. They open their phone, they start already checking, doing other things. Abbe Yishai says, when you do that, you're doing a big havet. Big sadness. Why? Because you're saying, I'm going to do that. You're doing a big havet. Big sadness. Why? Because you're sending the prayer that will go straight to Hashem, but you're doing it while you're washing your hands. Because when you do a Shere you have to stand straight, you have to be, have the intention that this prayer is going to HaKadosh Baruch That this prayer is going with direct contact with Hashem. And with that thought, we'll carry on for you to, to continue on forward.